Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Bells here. This video is for Pre-Calc A Section 1-7. Um, this is 2021, uh, January, uh, January 10th. So, um, just trying to throw this out there for you. The stuff that I'm going to show you right now, um, a lot of 1-7 is problem solving uh, applications. So I'm going to give you a bunch of different scenarios. So it's not like uh, every single problem is going to be identical to what you see, but hopefully what you can do is take some of the mathematical understanding that you already have, uh, maybe draw some accurate pictures, make some connections between some stuff, and, uh, and uh, work some things out. Um, some of them will be identical, so just make sure you know the process, uh, but know that it's open-ended enough to extend to other things. Okay, uh, so there's a lot of these ones that already have quite a bit of written words down on them. Um, please go ahead and pause the video, copy down any of these uh, example problems as you uh, uh, want uh, before we start going through. Them. Okay, so uh, we're going to start with some basic stuff. So again, <clears throat> section one seven is all about problem solving applications. So. If we make a statement like this, 42% of a number is 116, our goal is to be able to take some written words um, scenario and convert it into a mathematical expression and or equation. Because um, if I can do that, then I can use the algebra skills to be able to solve that equation or work with that equation. So 42% of a number, um, we know that that becomes 0.42 of in mathematics refers to multiplication so of a number well we don't know the number so we're going to use an x or a variable uh, you can choose whichever variable you want i don't care maybe you want n because it's said of a number uh, is refers to um, equals and 116. so i can convert this written word this written <coughs> um, written out statement into a mathematical equation looks like this well, how do I go ahead and solve this? Well, um, I need to know what the 0.42 is doing to the x. Well, that, of course, is multiplication, so I need to do division. 0.42, 0 0.42. Uh, I grab my handy-dandy little calculator right here, and I get 116 divided by 0.42, and I get 276.19. So 276.19. And again... I'm not super concerned about uh, your, your rounding. <sighs> um, taking it to the hundreds is usually going to be good for a lot of stuff. Now, if again, I'm going to be using this answer multiple times over, I probably want to store this whole thing on my calculator. Remember, I can do that using the STO button all the way down here at the bottom, STO and store that answer in, say, X, and then use it that way um, if I'm going to um, be using that in future problems. Okay. So this one says, after a 5.75% raise, an employee's salary is $55,518.75. So uh, basically, in this case, we're saying, hey, uh, I don't know what the salary is. That's X. I get a raise of 5.75%. Um, and you can do that a couple different ways. You can say, uh, I'm going to multiply that by uh, 1.0575, because that 1 represents 100% of the original salary, and then 5.75% the as a decimal is 0 0.0575. So I know whatever I had, I have an increase of 0.0575, or 5.75%. And I know that I'm supposed to end up with 55,518.75. So again, I'm taking the written words and trying to write an equation. Well, how do I solve this one? Um, similar to the last one, I'm going to now divide by this. So I take 55... 518.75 and I divide it by 1.0575 hit enter and it turns out the person's original salary was $52,500 $52,500 now just because I wrote it like this wrote this original statement like this doesn't mean that I can't rephrase it a different way so please don't just take whatever this number is and this number is and do that division. 
make sure you read the situation out carefully so that um, if the wording changes or the locations uh, of the numbers change, that it could completely change the problem. Okay? So here we go. A rectangle. This area is 120 square inches. So I might do something like this. As soon as I read something, I'm going to try and draw a picture, or draw an accurate picture of it. Well, I know the area is 120 inches squared. Now, it might say later on this question, uh, what color is the black truck? Well, you know, I don't care that I'm doing this before I answer the question that's being asked. I'm just trying to organize my thoughts, and I try and do that as I read through that. Maybe you like to read through the whole thing once first, and that's totally good too. Um, just something uh, that I might do. So, its length is three inches more than two times its width. Hmm. Well, it's comparing length to width and saying the length is uh, three inches more than uh, two times its width. Well, if it's comparing length to width, then we need to know what the width is. And if we don't know what the width is, then we use a variable. So I can go ahead and write that as w. Now I can express this length based on that width. So the length is, that's equals, right? So l equals three inches more than, well, three inches more than means addition. Two times its width means multiplication, so that's 2w plus 3. So then I can write this as 2w plus 3. Well, then I have to just know basic geometry, right? That uh, length times width needs to equal area. So I would write 2w squared plus 3w, right? W uh, length times width, w times 2w is 2w squared, w times 3 is 3w, equals 1. 20. And now I have a quadratic equation, and a quadratic equation uh, I can try a couple different ways. Uh, 1, 2w squared plus 3w minus 1, 20 equals 0. I could try and factor this, uh, and I don't know if it factors uh, or not. Um, I could do the quick check, right, the b squared minus 4ac, and see if I get a perfect squared uh, to see if it works. Um, but Almost all of our story problems uh, that I give you, we're going to do, um, you're going to be able to uh, use your calculator, okay? So the goal on some of these is being able to get the equation, then I want you to be able to use the tech to uh, work with the equation. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my y equals, I get that uh, white fade off of there, and put it in. So 2x squared, remember you can use x for it, just know what your x represents plus 3x, oops, I lost my 3, plus 3x, minus 120, enter, and I'll go ahead and put 0 in for the other one, uh, and then uh, uh, if you want, you can think about what the window might be beforehand, so here we go, uh, let's say that w is 10, so that would be 10 times 23, is 10 times 23 bigger than 120, the answer is yes, so that means zoom 6, a normal standard viewing window is big enough for us to be able to work. Now you can see that I have some dots here. Well, that's stuff left over from some sort of statistics before. Second y equals on my stat plots, and I'm going to go ahead and turn all those plots off. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Enter, it says done. Go back to my graph again, and I can see that I have two different solutions for this equation. This one's a negative solution. I don't need that, right? That's that doesn't do me any good, but I would like the positive one. So second trace, uh, number five, intersection. Just simply hold the right arrow down a little bit so that I can come closer to that location. Three enters, and it turns out that my x is 7.03. So uh, 7.03, in this case, uh, is my w, so the width is 7.03 and it's 219 so again I might if I'm going to use this again use this number to answer some other question I might go ahead and put that in um, and I don't know what the extension to this is but this is what I'd have to do first to be able to get this maybe the question is going to ask what's the perimeter well then I'd plug in that value into here and then I double it and add 3 to get it here and then I add up all the sides 
Okay. Maybe it's going to say that another shape has this same width uh, for its radius, find its volume. I don't know. I just know that when I have the written words, I try and draw a picture, I try and put stuff into it, and then I try and go ahead and solve that stuff. And every single one of these questions could be completely different, but your ability to read it and transfer that written word into an equation is what we're really looking for. Okay? Um, so here we're going to go to this one. It says John mixes an 80% solution with a 45% solution to obtain 130 milliliters of a 60% solution. Well, let's do a little quick check here. So here's an 80% solution, and here's a 45% solution. And uh, together, uh, they're going to create a 60% solution. So I'm hoping, uh, hoping this makes sense. You got a strong solution, and whatever it is, I don't care uh, what it is. Maybe it's alcohol and water. Maybe it's uh, um, uh, uh, Kool-Aid and ginger ale. Oh, I don't know. Whatever these things are that we're mixing together. Uh, this is pretty strong one. This is not as strong. Uh, and together, those things uh, make something that's in the middle. Now, if I said uh, they were added together and made a 90% solution, um, tell me how much each one was. You would say, hey, that's, that's not possible. I can't take something weaker than 90 and another thing weaker than 90 and get something that equals 90. But definitely a strong one plus a weak one can get me something in the middle. So how do I go about doing this? Well, I know that this is 130, right? And I don't know how much this one is, right? So, But we can call it X. So if this is X that I put into it, and it totals 130, then how much of the 45% solution did I put in? I must have put in 130 minus whatever I put in for the other one. So I can represent both of these that way. Now, I could have used x and y, but you know, then I've got two different variables for that equation. Okay, uh, so hopefully this makes sense. So I should be able to write this, that 0.8 of x plus 0.45 of 130 minus x must equal 0.6 of 130. And this is a linear equation. I should be able to take that linear equation now and just uh, go ahead and solve it. And again, I can do it two ways. I can, I can do all that math here, because again, it's just degree ones for both of these x's and do that, or I can just put it into the handy dandy calculator. Well, I like tech, and I feel pretty comfortable with tech, and I hope that you start to feel more and more comfortable with this tech. So here we go, 0.8x plus 0.45 parentheses 130 minus x, oop, 130 minus x, close parentheses, and then what is it supposed to equal? It's supposed to equal 0 0.6 times 130. Now, if you wanted to, you could find out what 0 0.6 times 130 is, and you know, uh, 0 0.6 of 100 is 60, and um, you know, so we're looking at about what, 78, I think, that we do it. You could do that on your own calculator. I'm going to go ahead and do it here. So y max uh, 100. Um, and if I wasn't sure at all, I could have put it at right here. Uh, just put it at 150, because that's definitely bigger than what both of them would be independently. Good deal. Uh, and then x max, I'm going to go out to 150. So uh, I can't put more than that in uh, for either one of those things. Good deal. So here we go. I got that line, I got that line, and they intersect. Second, trace, number five, enter, enter, enter. And it shows 55.71. 55.71. I'm like, yay, 55.71 milliliters. Uh, but which is that? Well, that's equal to x, and that's important. And x is, the way I wrote it, the 80% solution. So, uh, 55.71 of the 80% solution 
and that means that whatever's left over, I can do that, right? Uh, 130 minus 55.71, 74.29 of the 45 percent solution are the two things that I have to mix together. And hopefully that makes sense um, because 60% is closer to 45% than to 80, right? So I knew that I had to add more of the weaker stuff to keep something that's weaker and that's exactly the math that worked out for me. So we're going to go uh, on this one. This is a similar type of problem. It says Sally invests $35,000 into the stocks, earning 8% and bonds that earn 5%. Why she didn't put them all into stocks? Um, let's pretend we don't know in the beginning what each one's going to earn, okay? So if she knew exactly what we were going to get, we would have put them all in stocks, right? We, we wouldn't technically put something in something that we knew was going to be weaker. For those of you who don't know much about stocks and bonds and stuff like that, bonds are usually a little bit safer. Um, Bonds can, are going to be consistent. They are usually backed by the federal government, and you're 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 going to get a you're going to get a certain percentage, and you don't have to worry about it. Stocks, uh, I think I've said it in some of the classes. Uh, maybe your stock is a really good stock, and you earn a lot more than eight percent, but also you could pick a really bad stock, and psh, you could tumble. Okay. Uh, so she makes two thousand four hundred fifty dollars in interest. Uh, how much was invested in each? Okay, so let's let's try this. Um, so uh, eight percent in of uh, stocks, which we don't know how much it was, and five percent or point zero five uh, in bonds. Which how much did she put in there? Well, she put X in here, then she put in thirty five thousand minus X in the other ones, right? deal and then uh, um, we knew that that was supposed to add up to two thousand four hundred and fifty dollars Ooh, so I can do this point zero eight X plus point zero five times thirty five thousand right thirty five thousand minus X equals twenty four fifty Okay, so how do I go ahead and put this into my calculator? What windows make sense? Hopefully you're going to start getting better and better at this. So I go to my y equals, I go clear, I go clear, and I put in 0.08x plus 0 0.05, parentheses, 35,000 minus x, close parentheses, and then I need it to equal 2450. Good deal. Uh, when I go to my window, uh, I know my X max. Um, I can't put more than $35,000 into either one of these things. So if I go to $40,000, that's definitely higher than I need it to be. I'll go ahead and leave that. And we knew it needed to be $2,450, so let's go to $3,000. So my intersection has to occur in this range. So those are my two lines. Second trace, number five, enter, enter, enter. Again, remember, you can pause the video anytime you need to. Uh, so 23, 333, 33, 23,333,33 is my amount, but it's my amount of what? Is it stocks? Is it bonds? Is it, what, what is it? Well, I solved for X just now, and X was my 8%, and my 8% was my stocks. So that has to be my stocks. And this has to be uh, whatever's left over from 35,000. So quit 35,000 minus 23, 333.3333, $11,666.60. We'll call it seven cents. We'll round this one up. Okay? And that's what has to go into bonds. And you can see that those two things add up to it. Now, just so we're clear, I solved a linear equation. I could also solve a system of equations. Uh, I could say that uh, x plus y equals 35 
thousand, and I could say that 0.08x plus 0.05y equals 2,450, and that right there is a system of linear equations. And if you guys remember back to your algebra class or your uh, data B class when we did matrices, when we did systems, uh, there you could solve this by substitution, you could solve this by elimination, uh, by matrices, by Kramer's rule, by all kinds of things. And we will later in this course reassign or redo all of these things again so that you get really good at it because there's tons of applications for that stuff. Um, but just know that that's another way that you can do the same problem. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to try and get each one of these in like five minutes or left without uh, short changing them. Okay, so uh, this is another problem. You will definitely get one of these problems. This is what I call a pool problem. So kind of like the window problem in the last unit. Now we're going to deal with a swimming pool. Okay, so it says a 30 by 70 rectangular pool. So I'm going to do this. It's 30 by 70 rectangular pool has a uniform concrete border all the way around it. So it's got this border, right? Most pools have some sort of border uh, around it. Maybe it's uh, wood, um, maybe it's uh, concrete, maybe it's uh, whatever it is, um, but something so that people can walk around the pool, some um, non-slip uh, surface for it. Uh, and it says the area of the pool and the border, so the area of these two things, so the area of the big square, big square, sorry, big rectangle, is 2,570 square feet. And we want to know what's the width of the border. Whew, well, so how do I do this stuff? And again, please don't try and fit every single question into its own thing. You have to ask yourself, well, what does it look like? And you saw that I started with drawing a picture. And we want to know how wide this is. Well, we don't know how wide this is. We're going to call it X. So then, what is this entire length right here? Well, this is 70 plus, well, there's an X over here. And since it's a uniform, keyword uniform, that means that it's the same all the way around. So 70 plus 2x is that length. So what is this length right here? Well, this is 30 plus 2x because it's x on that side and it's x on that side. And then we said that the area of the whole thing is 2570. So 70 plus 2x uh, and 30 plus 2x must equal 2,570. Uh, so now do I, do I add all of those things up? Do I multiply them? What do I do? Well, that's what you, you got to know. This is a rectangle. This said area. Area is length times width. So this times this must equal this. There's my mathematical representation. Awesome. Grab your calculator and let's do some math. Go to your y equals. Clear that out. Clear that out. And I get uh, parentheses 70 plus 2x, close parentheses, parentheses 30 plus 2x, close parentheses. And uh, what I want it to equal, I want it to equal 2570. Okay, so what do I do now on my window? I gotta have a window that makes sense. Well, I know that I want it to equal 2570, so 3000 is big enough for that. Now the question is, What's my x? Well, don't make it be 3,000. That would mean that your border is 3,000 feet around your pool. That, that's just, that just doesn't make any sense. So my guess is I, my, my border can't be negative, so I can get rid of that. Probably not going to be more than 10 foot. So again, understand what each of these variables represent. So this is the combined area, right? It, but x is your width of concrete. So I feel pretty good about that. So I go ahead and graph, and there's my thing, there's my other thing. I'm like, woo, I got an intersection, that's good. Second trace, number five, enter, enter, enter. Uh, so my border must be 2.248, 2.248 feet. 
Now, that's pretty close. So if I was actually trying to do the construction, I might round at this point to that. Okay. Now, uh, I don't know. Maybe the question then is going to be, what's my perimeter? Well, I put 2.25, which is x into there. Times it by 2, add 70, double that, put it into there, add 30, double that, add all that up. You know, I don't, I don't know what the questions are going to ask. I'm just trying to go step by step through it and show you how I can convert written word into equations. And then it's our job as students in this level to be able to take an equation and know how to use our tech to get an answer and then know what we do with this answer to help the question. Okay. Um, I might ask another question and say the pool is uh, eight foot deep. Okay, and it's 30 by 70. What's the volume of the pool? I, I don't need to do any of this picture, any of this stuff, any of this solving. I'd simply multiply 30 by 70 by 8 and say, there we go. There's my volume, assuming there's no shallow end, that it's uniform all the way through. Okay, so again, just because you see a pool question later, please don't automatically assume that you do the exact same thing every time. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's our goal, right? Uh, take every situation differently. Use what you know to be able to do it. Okay, so final thing here. Final thing. You guys can do this. Uh, a grain elevator is leaking grain at 37.2 cubic inches per minute. Okay, so stuff's falling out of this grain elevator. It forms a uh, conical pile whose radius and height increase at the same rate. How long does it take to grow from one foot high to two foot high? And how high is the pile if it leaks for 12 and a half hours? Well, part of me right now goes, screw it. Uh, I did all the other ones right. I'm not going to do this one. I'll just call it good. And then part of me goes, uh, no, I can do this. What am I going to do? I'm going to take it one brief little chunk at a time. I can do this. Okay, so here we go. So what's going on? So um, let's pretend we've got this thing this green elevator. And I don't know if you guys know anything about green elevators, um, but typically like a, a train uh, would come underneath and this green elevator would store all this green and the green would pour down into this. I'm trying to draw the tracks, pretend that the tracks are, maybe I should have done it this way, um, like this underneath this elevator and the big trains on there and the trains go in that direction on this. But there's this elevator, it's going up here and it's got a chute and the grain pours out into the, each one of the cargo holds of the train and goes. Well, it turns out there's no train there right now, no train. And there's a hole, like maybe something happened, uh, rusted out, whatever, and it's leaking this grain. And what is the grain leaking into? It says it's leaking into a conical. Conical means a cone, right? So if I do that. Uh, it's leaking into a cone whose radius and height are changing at the exact same rates. Okay, so what does it mean to get into this pile? Well, that means that we're dealing with volume. So I need to know at least the volume formula for a cone. Well, I use my handy dandy telephone uh, that I got in my pocket right now. If I don't know it off the top of my head and I look it up and I go, oh, that's one third pi r squared h. That's the volume of it. And because, and only, only because I wanted to make this problem simpler for you, it says the radius and the height increase at the same rate. Ooh, so that means the radius and the height are kind of like the same variable. So I can, and only because it says they change at that rate, again, it would be a much harder problem. I can just have, instead of r squared and h, since h and r are changing at the same rate, I can kind of change that h and that R, make them interchangeable. Uh, so I get this. Is that okay? So uh, the first question says, how long does it take to grow from one foot to two foot? Okay, so I've got a one foot tall pile, right? And then it grows two foot tall. Well, I think what makes sense to me is this. I need to know what the volume is here at one foot, and I need to know what the volume is here at two foot. 
and uh, find the difference between those two things. Because if I find the difference between those two things in terms of cubic inches, oof, crap, cubic inches. These are feet, and those are cubic inches. So now I guess this is my next question. Do I want to do 12 and 24 and do inches and inches? Maybe that's easier for my brain. Okay? So let's convert those 12 inches. Make sure, because it makes a big difference, right? So let's find out what the volume is if it's 12 inches tall. So 12 inches. And again, I'm just drawing out pictures and writing down stuff and trying to understand these things. Uh, so 12 inches. So 12 inches go in, in here. So on quit. There we go. So I've got one third pi times 12 cubed. Uh, one thousand eight hundred nine point five five seven. So, one thousand eight hundred and nine point five five seven cubic inches. Sweet. Now let's try it again at twenty four inches. Twenty four inches. Okay, one third pi twenty four cubed. 14,476.45895 cubic inches. You can see that even though the height doubled, the amount of material didn't double. It takes a lot more to double that. In fact, it takes eight times as much uh, if we did that division uh, because that two is changing for uh, each one of those three R's. So two times four uh, and then again times two, which is eight. Okay. So I need to do that subtraction. So I'm going to minus this answer right here. And that's how many more cubic inches are in the second pile than in the first pile. Does that make sense for everybody? Now, what do I divide that by? 37.2. I divide that by 37.2, and I get 340.5. 340.5 what? Well, this is cubic inches per minute, so 340.5 minutes. Yay. And I could change that to hours if I wanted to. Uh, I'll go ahead and divide that by 60. And I got about 5.675 hours. Okay. How long does it take? Uh, if I want minutes, I'm going to do 340.5 minutes. And, or I could do 5.675 hours. Um, and maybe I ask how many seconds it would be. Well, if it was seconds, I'd times that by 60. And get that. So I got to be able to convert between my units. And then this last one says, how high is the pile if it leaks for 12 and a half hours? Okay, well, that's a completely different question. So what do I do? It's leaking for 12.5 hours, but my rate is in minutes, so I got to times that by 60. And then I got to times that by 37.2 to find out how many total cubic inches is going on. So I go clear and I go 12.5 times 60 times 37.2 and I hit enter and I get 27,900 cubic inches. Yeah? Make sense where all those things are coming from? This is what? This is the value. Well, uh, I want to know how high the pile is. That's the height. But height is the same as the radius. So if I can just solve for the radius, I can do this. Well, I know that that's equal to 1 third pi r cubed. So i got to solve for r. How do I get rid of a 1 third? Well, I times by the reciprocal. So I times by 3 over 1. So 27,900 times 3. Enter. I get that. I got to get rid of pi, so I divide by pi on both sides. Uh, divide by pi on both sides. 
hit the wrong button the first time. Enter. And that's equal to my radius cubed, right? So then I need to cube root that. So cube rooting is raising to the one third power, right? Or the 0.3333333 power, whichever way you want to do that. And I get that, 29.86. Well, that's 29.86 inches. If I want to know how tall it is in feet, I simply divide that by 12. And I get about uh, pretty close to two and a half feet. Um, but I don't put two and a half feet. I'm going to go a little bit more detail because this is there. So 2.4889 uh, feet tall. Good deal. So it's not like it's a massive leak or anything. It took 12 and a half hours for you know a pile to get up to you know something still smaller than the bottom of my desk. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you guys for being patient through all this, but there's no shortcut in problem solving, okay? Step number one, to be successful in problem solving. One, you got to attempt it. You can't just put your head down and go, I don't want to do that. Oh, those application problems. Eh. Okay, that's our goal. That's our goal to get our brain to start thinking that way. Two, I got to read it all correctly, okay? And I have to have the mathematical ability to take what's in written form and write a mathematical equation. After I can do that, then all these algebra skills and all this tech that we've been working on takes over. And that's what I use to be able to understand and comprehend the problems more. And I do it with a belief in myself. I believe that if I'm thorough and I'm detailed and I'm and I take all that stuff down that I can do it. Okay, that, you know, honestly, you know, believing in yourself is half the battle. And if you go, well, I'm the only one, I'm looking around this classroom, I'm the only one that doesn't get it, no. I'm not, I'm not the only one. I've been doing this for what, more years than you've been alive. Everybody's going to struggle at different times, okay? Embrace the struggle. Embrace the fact that some things should be challenging. And if every single one of these problems that I gave you right now, you could have done without me saying anything, awesome. Guess what? I don't want to overwhelm everybody in here, right? I want to make it with something that you can handle. And I believe in you and you can handle it. And if you're going, man, this bells, this stuff's too easy for me, we can find you some other things to work on. And if you say, Mr. Bells, this stuff's too hard for me, it's not. You can do it. Uh, remember those Wednesdays? Come see me on Wednesdays. We'll talk through some stuff. Okay? Uh, get your phone out. FaceTime somebody. Okay? But you got to put in the time. You have to put in the time. And uh, the more you put it in, the more, uh, I, I know I say this before, uh, self-satisfaction you're going to get out of it. Hopefully this was beneficial to you. Uh, try hard. It might take a little while to do this homework for 1-7. So make sure you put some time and effort into that and give a big block of time for it. Maybe even call somebody else up and say, hey, you want to do this together as we FaceTime through some things? It'll help. Um, we'll talk to you later. Bye.